This video is brought to you by Unbound Merino. A common and very unfortunate reality of any trip to Europe is the potential of pickpockets. And in today's video, I'm gonna share several tips that will help you avoid being pickpocketed and even some things you could do to outsmart pickpockets that make an attempt. Hey guys, Nick here from Away Together. My wife, Allie, and I have traveled extensively throughout Europe, and one thing that we've encountered our fair share of is scams and pickpockets. So today, we're gonna cover things like why Europe even has so many pickpockets, the circumstances where pickpocketing happens, and several things that you can do to avoid being pickpocketed, like where to keep your items, what to wear, and several other tips that I'll share along the way. Now, right out of the gate, I wanna say this. I don't think visiting a European city is more dangerous than visiting a city anywhere else. Europe overall has pretty low rates of violent crime. However, petty theft like pickpocketing can be common in certain places throughout Europe. Now, pickpocketing happens all over the world every single day, but the top five cities for pickpocketing, at least at the time of filming this video, are Barcelona, Paris, Rome, Prague, and Madrid. Do you see the correlation? There's probably no surprise that these are some of the most visited tourist cities in the world. And by the way, this is not me picking on Europe. Actually, pickpocketing used to be really prevalent in the USA as well. There's a lot of different ways and places that pickpocketing happens, but rather than give you a comprehensive list of every scheme to be on the lookout for, I wanna teach you the three circumstances pickpockets use to trick you. And I'll fill in examples along the way. Circumstance number one you're in a crowd. Places like tourist landmarks and train stations draw big crowds and a disproportionate number of tourists. These are prime spots for pickpockets because generally, where there are tourists, there are pickpockets. In crowded situations, you're more likely to get bumped into. The classic pickpocketing scenario is the bump and lift. Someone accidentally bumps into you and they take something. Think about how likely that is, standing in front of the Eiffel Tower, or on the Charles Bridge, or around the Duomo in Florence. You also wanna consider public transportation. Many parts of Europe have amazing public transportation systems, and you should totally use them. But these are places to be especially aware. Metro and train stations are crowded, and the metro and train cars themselves can be too. A common pickpocketing occurrence is actually on the train itself, as you're getting off. Someone will jam up the door and then people are in a hurry trying to get it open and get out. You're focused on stepping off. You finally do get off and then you realize your phone's gone. That leads us to circumstance number two. You're distracted. When you witness a public commotion or a strange distraction, that's a time to be especially vigilant. Pickpockets often work in teams and someone will cause a distraction while another will snatch valuables. Here's some common ones. A fight breaks out, a group of kids approaches you or encircles you, someone falls and gets hurt right in front of you, someone appears to pass out, someone accidentally spills something on you. Street performers, I love watching a good street performer when I travel, but be conscious of the other fans hanging around. You're distracted. Circumstance number three, your guard is down. A common cause of being pickpocketed is having a misconception about who could be a pickpocket. Now, I'm not sure who you picture. Maybe a rough adult male, maybe some sinister guy with a twirly mustache. I, I doubt it. But the thing is, pickpockets can be kids. They can be people who are well-dressed. They could look like other fellow tourists. This can be a very subtle thing. So my point is, don't expect the person who does it to look obvious. And just while we're on the topic, here's a couple of instances where I've heard of other travelers being taken advantage of. Okay, you're dining at a restaurant, you're seated outside. It's really nice to sit outside in Europe and enjoy a great view. A fellow tourist approaches your table and they're showing you a map, they ask for directions. And you're nice, you try to help. All the while their free hand is reaching out and they're snatching your phone off the table. They say thank you very much, they walk away, you realize your phone's gone. Okay, the solution to that one is don't put your phone on the table. And actually when you're dining, especially if you're seated outside in like a very crowded or touristy area, keep your phone in your pocket, your bag, put it between your feet or take the strap and loop it around the armrest, keep it in your lap, keep your stuff secure. That's one example. Another example is really friendly people, right? Going out of their way to get to know you or pay special 
attention to you. I've, I've heard of attractive women targeting drunk men specifically. Okay, 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 okay. I hope I haven't sufficiently freaked you out. What I am not saying is to be on high alert your entire vacation, so much so that you can't even enjoy yourself. What I am saying is, this actually happens, okay? Have some situational awareness. And so now that you know the situations and the circumstances, let's talk about ways that you can prevent being an easy target. These are five things that I do to make myself more pickpocket resistant, if you will. Okay, first and most important, have a plan for your stuff. As you're out and about, I recommend keeping less with you in general. And then valuables that you don't need with you while you're out for the day, like maybe a tablet as an example, keep that in the hotel room or the Airbnb. And the items that you leave in the room, don't leave those out in the open. I would stash them in your bag and lock the bag or put them in the hotel safe. Some people swear by that option. Then as you're out and about, you don't need every credit card you own, all the cash that you may have gotten for the ATM for your trip. Just carry enough with you for the day or maybe two days, plus your passport, your phone, and any other items that are essential for you. You'll also wanna consider the placement of the items that you're carrying with you. Opt for things that you can keep on the front of your body. For example, if you carry a purse or a bag with you, consider a sling that you could wear in the front. This is one that Allie really likes. And one thing she likes about it is that the clasp is in the front as well, as opposed to in the back. Something you may consider as a bag that's slash proof. Some pickpockets are not so subtle and they'll just cut the strap or even into the bag itself. Some people swear by money belts. And to be honest, I've never used one. I've always just put my items in some other hard to reach place. I'm not discouraging money belts, but there are alternatives. For example, if you're a person who puts things in their pockets, try to use your front pocket instead of a back pocket. Not only is this gonna be better on your back, it's gonna give pickpockets a harder time too. For example, I have this wallet by Nomadic. It's really meant for the front pocket and I've been carrying it for a few years now. Another tip is to use clothing specific for travel that has hidden or zippered pockets. These pants and shorts by Unbound Merino have a zippered pocket that's exactly passport sized. Now, if you've seen any of our other videos, you already know that I'm a big fan of Merino wool for travel. It's soft, moisture wicking, temperature regulating, wrinkle resistant, antibacterial, resistant to odor, which all means that you could wear it more than once on your trip before needing to wash it, which then enables you to pack less. It's the perfect fabric for travel. Now, I've actually been wearing Unbound Merino for a couple of years now. Look at this clip. This was a couple of years ago. Uh, that's why I'm very happy that they agreed to sponsor this video. Before we started traveling full time, I researched a bunch of Merino brands, but ultimately I chose Unbound Merino because they are squarely focused on travelers. They took that perfect fabric, merino wool, and made pieces specific for travelers. This zippered pickpocket deterrent passport pocket is a perfect example. Their clothing is simple, good looking, versatile, and high quality. Next, you'll wanna make sure that you have backups of any important documents. Let's say something important gets lifted. Your passport, your driver's license, other important documents, you would hate to lose those. Make sure you have color copies of those stashed somewhere deep in your bag and digital copies of them stored somewhere safe in the cloud that you could access if needed. I tend to put these pieces of paper folded up in a Ziploc bag and then I stash them deep in both my personal item bag and my luggage where only I could see or access them. Consider this a form of insurance in case any of your stuff gets taken. Speaking of insurance, you're gonna wanna get travel insurance that covers theft, or at least consider it. You probably already know about or have at least heard of travel insurance. Typically, you think of this for things like interruptions or cancellations to your trip, or if you get sick and you have to go to the hospital. But many travel insurance policies also cover theft. When Al and I traveled for six months straight, I took out a policy with World Nomads that covered every country we visited. And part of what was covered was baggage and personal effects. In essence, that would cover the loss of any items that gets stolen. Make sure you know what's covered. For example, anything that gets taken from an unattended vehicle is not covered. So don't leave stuff in your rental car overnight or really ever. Read the fine print, okay? There are catches, but travel insurance can honestly be worth it. It saved our butts a couple of times. Tip number five is about mindset. 
Earlier we talked about situational awareness and not being naive. Not every stranger you encounter on your trip is a villain that's out to get you. And I would hate the fear of being pickpocketed to keep you from traveling or make you so skeptical that you can't even have a good time. Balance wisdom and optimism. Be wise as serpents, yet harmless as doves. And in the same token, if you get pickpocketed, don't let it ruin your trip. It's gonna suck if something gets stolen, and I'm not trying to minimize that at all. Hopefully, some of what I'm sharing in this video will help prevent that from happening. But please, don't let it ruin your trip. Things are replaceable, but memories and experiences are not. If you're curious about other scams that you could possibly encounter while traveling, I've got a channel recommendation for you. Portable Professional, run by my friend Megan, shares all kinds of valuable travel tips, and she's got a useful and informative video about common scams that you'll wanna avoid. I'll link her video in the description below. Please check that out and make sure to subscribe. She does a really, really good job. Thanks so much for watching. Happy travels.